My name's Ian Taplin, I'm 53. Uh, I used to work for Lloyds Bank from 2005 to 2010. I've been in the financial services industry for 20 years. Previous to that, when I left university, I was in the army as a platoon commander in the Light Infantry Regiment, which is now the Rifles Regiment. And after that, I was in book publishing. I've set up this website because I believe that Lloyds Bank have broken UK regulatory law. And I came across various examples of what I believe are corruption and fraud. The way I want to make a contribution to the current debate on banking is to provide the British public with a real focus. The newspapers, television are full of the issues of banking, the banking crisis, the collapse of banking, uh, the, the lack of trust in banking, the abuse of the bankers, the financial services sector. This banking crisis has been hugely damaging to the United Kingdom. It's cost us 10% of our wealth, 800,000 jobs, nearly 300 billion of taxpayers' money, and it continues to have ramifications throughout the country. What I'm able to do is provide you with the focus on one particular bank. This website is designed to take you inside the bank, takes you on a journey through an employee's eyes about what happens when they make complaints and their subsequent treatment have been made in the complaints. What is particularly interesting about the power of the website is that I can make these people accountable who I believe have broken the law. And what I aim to do on the website is to describe the actions of these directors who ignored my complaints, describe their actions when they uh, intimidated me, bullied me, threatened me, and describe the way I was fired for making complaints. I'm then going to name them on the website. I felt really powerless when I came up against successive brick walls put up by the bank, right up through the layers of management to compliance directors, managing directors, up to the chief executive. Successive letters were either ignored or dismissed. But I then realised that I had an opportunity through the digital media and through the internet to tell my story. So I'm relying on you, the viewer, who've taken the trouble of coming to this website to spread the word that there is a way to stand up to these banks. There is a way to make these bankers accountable so we can focus in on specific behaviours of a specific bank. The other thing I'd like you to bear in mind is that if you have your own experiences and want to describe what happened to you when dealing with Lloyds Bank, get in touch with me. I want to hear about it. You can all make a contribution to this debate. The Lloyds Banking Group is the UK's biggest retail bank. The Lloyds Banking Group includes the Halifax, the Bank of Scotland, Scottish Widows Insurance Company, Cheltenham Gloucester and Lloyds TSB. Those are the main brands. It is 41% owned by the British public and these branches are found throughout the country. So this is a huge, huge company which is present throughout the United Kingdom. Why and how did this banking crisis come around? I think uh, one of the first main reasons is the distorting effect of bonuses. We know that investment bankers at Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch can bank 20 to 30 million. Dick Fold of Lehman Brothers, which collapsed in the United States, banked $500 million, but he bankrupted the bank. On the retail side, Lloyd's TSB is a retail bank. It's not an investment bank. But even so, Eric Daniels banked over £20 million. Helen Weir banked over £10 million. So these directors, these leaders of the banks, are highly incentivized to reach these targets, which are uh, sales targets and also share price targets. So they can double, treble, quadruple their pay and total rewards if they hit these targets. So take for example if you're Helen Weir and you've got an opportunity to get very wealthy, you're going to do your damnness to make sure that you get wealthy and you, it, that actually influences the way you behave. So this bonus system and this incentive system goes right away through the bank from the, the executive board, the, the chairman, 
chief executive and the executive directors all the way through the various layers of management right down to the junior sales consultant who you might meet when you walk into a Lloyd's TSB bank. If you walk into a branch of Lloyd's TSB throughout the country and you see a junior consultant um, who's regulated, he wants to sell you a, an ISA or a pension, whatever, he can, well, he used to be able to double, treble his income through a bonus system. Therefore, the bank are incentivizing him for sales growth over and above value to the customer. And that's very important. So the first main reason why the bankers act as they do is because of the distorting effect of bonuses in their pay package. If you think about the best companies in this country, if you go into John Lewis or Marks and Spencers, you, there is a, there's a trust there. You go into these companies knowing that if you buy a product, that you're gonna buy good quality at a reasonable price. And if you have a problem, you're gonna be well looked after. Well, the banks do the opposite. They sell you terrible products at the highest possible cost. And if you've got a problem with that contract, they don't want to know. I think if you took a head count of and asked each member of the British public, you know, do they trust the banks? I would say well over 50% would say no, uh, which, is, which is sad.